Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. It's ridiculous how many times I've tried to film this voiceover now, but hopefully this time we'll get it right. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my annual set of It's Nails from the movie It. This will be the fourth year I've done this set of nails. It'll be my third year I posting a video on them on YouTube. I will leave a link to these videos down in the description box if you'd like to watch them too. So what I've done here is I have painted two coats of the Ica Black Gel Polish onto the baby finger. I really love this gel polish, it's really pigmented and just really nice to work with. I give 30 seconds in between each coat and then I'm going in with the Ica White Gel Polish. Again, I really like the gel polish. Ica have really affordable gel polish on Amazon. They're a really good brand. I haven't seen many collections from them, but I've purchased a couple in the past and I really, really, really like them. I highly recommend them. They're super affordable. As you can see here, I'm painting some white blood drips. I used a dotting tool to create like the actual drips and then I'm just using my detailer brush to sort of join them all up and make them look like actual blood drips. I'm not keeping them white. I will be going over with red in a moment. I just use a white so it makes that colour truly pop when I do put the red over the top because if you was to put a red over the top of black it wouldn't be overly visible, it would be quite hard to see and I really want that red to pop. And then I am simply just painting the word it, I have copied it from the film cover of the movie in exactly the same sort of curves and twists that are in it, I've not just done that for the sake of it, I've done that for a reason. And yeah, like I said, I'm just going to cure this for 30 seconds and then I'm going to be painting over it with the red. I've chosen 807 from Beatles. I can't remember what collection it's from. I really love Beatles shell polish again. Again, it's super affordable. You can get it on Amazon. It's really nice stuff. They're tiny bottles, but it's so pigmented. They last for ages. They really do last for ages. As you can see, because I've painted white on underneath, it's really made the red pop. It's truly showing how red it is. It's a nice blood red colour. Yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with how these turned out. I'm also going to be making them a bit sparkly. So what I'm doing is after I've painted the red, I'm going to cure it again for a minute. And then I'm going to wipe it down with some IPA just to make sure no colours run. And then I give it a coat of um, Humic Top Coat, their matte top coat. I'm going to be doing sort of like half and half, well not quite half and half, but like slightly glossy in places and mainly matte. So instead of having to paint the matte in awkward places afterwards, I just coat the whole nail in matte top coat, cure that for a minute, and then I will go in and work on the glossy bits. I'm using the Imily Reflective Glitter Gel. There's going to be a video coming out on these in the next day or two. I've got a new gel polish collection from them that is just yeah it's incredible keep your eyes peeled for it super affordable on amazon and it's absolutely incredible and i couldn't help but use a little bit on this set of nails it kind of looks pink on the bottle but it actually shines through more red when you're actually using it i am completely and utterly obsessed with reflective glitters at the moment they are just my favorite i've constantly had them on my nails I absolutely love them and I just wanted to incorporate some into the set of nails. I normally every year have done the set matte I think but this year I sort of wanted to incorporate some form of glitter and sparkle and gloss this set so I'm just doing the blood drips with a layer of the reflective glitter. I'll cure that and then I'm just going to use the Born Pretty Super Top Coat just over the blood drips again just to seal it in and just give it that bit of extra shine and protection. Again a really nice top coat really affordable it's like scratch resistant and it's super glossy and i can't recommend it enough i need to get myself some more as i'm nearly out of sort of been using lately i absolutely love it but yeah that is all i'm doing to this nail it's quite a simple nail i generally don't really go too glamorous on baby nails i just sort of you know do a simple design and try and sort of feature like the middle finger and the ring finger a bit more that's sort of where i've been going lately of nail art as they're like my two feature nails as you can see i painted the ring finger in the white gel polish from Ica again and I'm just painting the red balloon there's like a prominent red balloon in the IT movie ironically I've never actually seen the film believe it or not <laughs> even though I do a set of nails on them every year but I just like to be able to see my progress year after year it's like the one thing I like to do I know it might be a little bit boring for you guys but it's just something I look forward to doing every year is my IT set of nails so yeah, I'm just painting the blue. I've used that bright red again from Beatles. And then I've left that wet. I haven't cured it. And then I'm going in with some of the Model 1's Burgundy from the Lipstick Collection. 
and the race I've left that wet so the two colours blend a lot easier and they're not so harsh but it just gives a bit more dimension and definition to the balloon. I've also added a bit of white in there as well, sort of blended that in just to sort of make it look a bit more like, you know, there's the light catching on the balloon type thing. And I've also added some reflective glitter gel as well. It is literally just to try and give it a bit more definition. I've matte top coated that and then I'm just putting the words, you'll float too. I know that's a popular thing from the It movie. Again, like I said, I haven't watched the film, so I'm not really too sure like what that's about. I should really watch the film, considering it's four years and I arrived on a set and I was based on this film. I'm definitely a horror movie girl. I love horror movies so, so, so much. But this is the one film I haven't seen, which is crazy, because I actually love Stephen King. I think he's a very, very talented writer. Obviously, he generally writes books. Um, a few of his books have become films. But he's very talented, got a sick mind, but I love him. One of my favourite books actually is called Rose Matter by Stephen King and that is a brilliant book. I've read it so many times. I'm not much of a book reader but if I want to sit down and read a book it'll be Rose Matter. It's such a good book. Highly recommend. But as you can see anyway I'm waffling too much as per usual. I've done the ring finger. I've just about top coated it and I've put a bit of glitter top coat on those bits where I have the reflective glitter. And then I've moved on to the middle <laughs> finger where I'm painting the it clown. So... A lot of people will sit there and sketch with a pencil on their nail just to sort of get like an idea of like sizing and all that lot when it comes to freehand, especially your characters. For some reason that technique doesn't work for me. I just literally just go straight in blank canvas and start painting. I'll sort of do like a rough sort of guide of where I'm putting everything and you'll see in a minute that I'll go back through and just sort of give more definition to each, in, in each individual bit and just sort of you know tweak it a little bit here and there but as you can see I've sort of gone a bit too far with the red sort of face paint going up that has gone into his eye so I'll just paint over that as some white gel polish and carry on I've added in some black lines to sort of act as creases in his forehead which I soften up with some IPA just to make him not look quite as prominent I don't really have many tips for freehand nail art it's just one of those that I just kind of dive in and see what happens. My only real suggestions when it comes to freehand nail art is when you're happy with a certain element, cure it. Just flash cure it. So when you move on to the next element, if that goes wrong, it's not a problem. You can just wipe the nail clean and the art that you are happy with will stay put. And it's just my top technique. It's just cure. Like, yeah, you'll be curing a lot, but just keep, you know, each time, like, do the lips, cure them, do the nose, cure them, do the eyes, cure them, and just build up bit by bit. This just makes a world of difference. It'll save you from getting frustrated. It's taken me years and years of practice to be where I'm at now, and I'm still not happy with my work. Some of my sets I absolutely love, but I can always see where I can improve bits that I haven't done very well. And it's just practice, so, you know, if you can stop yourself from getting frustrated while you're practicing just by doing simple little things like curing in between elements it'll make the world a difference having a good brush makes the world a difference when i'm painting like this i'm not doing it off the top of my head my phone is sat next to me with an image that i want to paint and i keep looking back at my phone and just slowly do bit by bit it takes me hours like i have to speed up these videos i've been asked a few times to do a freehand video in real time but for something in depth like this, I can't because I am literally filming for hours and I'm having to speed things up dramatically. Some of these clips are sped up by like 10 times. And I'm really not kidding you there. Like it really does take me... Sometimes I'll be working on the same set over a space for a couple of days. Like I do take my time because I want to get it right as well as I can. So that's just my thing with freehand. Like just take your time. Don't expect it to go perfectly, but just cure in between when you are happy. So, you know, you just got to keep wiping off and retrying and retrying. And eventually it'll go right. And over time, like, you'll get quicker, you'll make less mistakes. It's just a matter of patience and practice when it comes to freehand. Mine's still not perfect. I see so much art freehand-wise. I'm like, wow, I really wish I could paint like that. And one day I'll get there, you know, I'm fully positive that one day I'll get there and I'll be 100% happy and be able to paint something that looks exactly like the image or the character, etc. Like one day it will be bang on and, you know, it's just, that's why I like doing these videos because each year I can see my own improvement and it just, you know, gives me that 
little bubbly feeling of yes I'm getting better um you know it's it's been a long journey but I really look forward to doing this set every year and I can just look at it and compare it to previous years and it just makes me feel a bit more confident but anyways let's stop being all sentimental um as you would have seen I've gone over the same bits multiple times I've tweaked little bits I'm adding some reflective glitter gel onto the lips and nose and then going in with the glossy top coat over the lips and nose again and also his little iris thingy in his eye just to make them pop and that's that nail done like it's really hard for me to explain what I'm doing when it comes to freehand as well because I'm so all over the place I just keep looking at it and just being like yeah that bit needs a bit more that bit needs a bit more or maybe I should paint over that bit and just sort of tune it down a bit etc etc there's no real tactic with my art, it's just kind of, I look at what I want to paint and paint it the best I can. Likewise, when you're doing writing like this, like I'm on the last nail now, and yeah, just cure, just do one letter, cure it, do another letter, cure it. I always start in the middle as well because it's easier to sort of, instead of risking it being too long and not fitting on the nail, I start at the centre. So I think, what is the centre letter of the word I'm trying to paint? And it just sort of helps me fit in equally on the nail, if that makes sense. So that is one trick I tend to do. I wouldn't write the L first. I'm writing the word loser, but I'm not going to start with the L first. I'll start at the S because that's the centre letter. And then that way, all the letters tend to be a bit more even and fit more central on the nail, if that makes sense. But it is just a matter of practice. Uh, we all have our own little ways, our own little techniques of doing these things. Like I said, a lot of people will sketch what they want wanting to paint on the nail prior with a pencil. For some reason, that just doesn't work out for me. I've tried, it's just not, it's not for me, but it is for other people. It's just, it's just a matter of being patient and just doing what's best for you and just keeping going. But yeah, this final nail just says loser and then it sort of like crossed out the S and put a V on it that says lover instead. Again, it's part of the movie, but I'm not familiar as to why. But yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. This voiceover has been awful, but this is a set of nails. I'm pretty happy with them. You know, I'm sure I'll do them next year again too. And hopefully there'll be improvements again. They're not perfect. I can see a ridiculous amount of faults, but I'm relatively happy with them. And I hope you guys like them too. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I'm sorry that I'm really not good at these voiceovers. Obviously, the first like year or so of me doing nail art videos, I didn't talk. I just put music over the top. And I haven't quite found out the best way of doing these voiceovers yet. But I'll get there. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing. Much love to you all, and I shall see you in the next video. Happy Halloween!